Hello. So today I'm going to be making butternut logs and also butter, uh, nut horns. Uh, both of these are a family recipe. Uh, I made a version of this recipe last year, uh, which I think turned out better, uh, but the video quality is absolutely horrid. So I'm redoing the recipe this year and including nut logs, which I'm cutting right there. It is a recipe that if you have kids, it is extremely interesting as a kid to make this recipe. Uh, it is fun, it is scientific in a way, there are things to do and machines and processes. Uh, it's something, a kid like me was really geeked out by this recipe. So if you have a kid, uh, a teenager or a young one, uh, give them a couple of these tasks and it goes a lot easier. You can you know, have somebody grinding the nuts, have somebody else you know, doing the egg whites, and you can knock this out in an hour or two. Uh, and if you do it all at once, then the dough does not have a chance to overproof. So uh, this looks like a collage, uh, and you'll see a lot of people say they're the same thing. But because you do uh, the the spread in the center is uh, soft walnuts that are ground to a breadcrumb consistency, and the egg whites, the center is solid. Whereas with a collage, it's usually just bound together by the, the butter and the different ingredients, but the egg whites form a soft pillow inside that holds everything together really nice. Two twenty eights. This is basically like a pie dough almost. Uh, so you want to keep it cool. Uh, I'm using softened butter. Uh, it's not like frozen chunks and stuff you would for pie dough or, or um, um, a biscuit or whatever. But it still needs to be kept cold, so try to work efficiently. Uh, it's very little sugar, uh, 500 grams of flour, and um, just a pinch of salt, half a, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, so it comes together pretty good. I'm going to work this in a little bit. I don't want it to melt, but I want it to get to the consistency of almost like a pie crust where you get the little bits of sand. Okay, that's about as good as I'm going to get for now. This is where I remind myself to always use a bigger bowl. Okay, we're gonna bring back this bowl. Add our egg yolks. According to my recipe, I need eight fluid ounces. There we go. To that, we're going to add yeast. In this case, it is one and a half teaspoons. In my original recipe, I put one and a half tablespoons. That's too much yeast. And this is yogurt, not sour cream. Because for some reason, sour cream in Mexico is almost impossible to find. So that goes in. And now we put in our wits. We 
using a stand mixer, this comes together pretty quickly. It's not necessary to try to form gluten. Uh, you just want this to come together. Evenly distribute the ingredients. This is still quite cold. You can see little bits of undissolved butter. If you want that. I don't want to work this too much with my hands because I don't want it to be come oily. And I am splitting this up this time. Uh, last year when I did this, I did a marathon version where I made five or six dozen of the cookies. This year, I'm going to split this batch into two portions um, by weight, and we're going to do two logs, and then with the rest, they're going to be the rolled cookies. Uh, the egg whites will go into the fridge until tomorrow, and those will be whipped up. All right, now we come to the most favorite part of mine as a kid, which was grinding the nuts with my grandma's uh, nut grinder. Uh, this is using a breadcrumb setting. I have not tried this in a food processor, uh, mainly because I never owned one. Uh, and I've recently gotten one, but I didn't want to uh, take a chance and introduce a new variable into this recipe at this point. Uh, so if you have a setting that you know you can get consistent breadcrumbs with walnuts, go for it. I have four cups of walnuts. I'm gonna grind those up to breadcrumb consistency. Just a note, these grinders are built to last. This one's probably 100 years old, maybe 90, let's say. Uh, but if you go to any Goodwill or Salvation Army, you're likely to find one of these on the shelf somewhere. They do not break. Um, pick one up. Uh, I think last time I got one, it was like five bucks with all the, the different attachments. Highly worth it. Anyway, but the consistency here is soft. There's no hard bits. There's no chunks. It is consistent. This, is a, this one's for nut butter. So if you wanted to make peanut butter, walnut butter, this is the one, it's still wet. But this is the one here for the, for the breadcrumbs. This is very fine compared to that one. And it's also, you can see how much this one's been used compared to the rest of these. I've made this recipe with both stiff peaks and soft peaks. Uh, if you're working with somebody, uh, you can go ahead and do stiff peaks and then it'll come together. It's stickier. It, it holds to the, uh, when you roll it out, it holds to the dough a little bit easier, uh, but it has a shorter working life. So if you are by yourself trying to make this, don't go full stiff peaks because it's going to dry out quicker. It'll become more um, unwieldy to manage. Uh, so just do a wetter mix, a little bit looser, and then you can go from there. By the way, this is where you'd lick your beaters if you trust your egg source. Okay, so what you wanna do now is just fold the nuts in. Uh, I did three different little batches here uh, and just fold over and up, over and up. You want to keep it nice and airy. Okay. 
Okay. First measurement is going to be 275 or 273 Perfect. So this will be one nut log. Second nut log. Perfect weight for these uh, in Imperial is uh, three quarters of an ounce or one ounce. Uh, that'll give you the, a good yield, uh, but something that's manageable. Um, with, with this, I need to uh, convert over to metric. So for metric, uh, three quarters is about 21 grams. So by my math, you've got about 546 um, grams of dough uh, for the nut horns. So that at 21 grams equals 25 nut horns. Easier if you just flatten out about uh, four or five of them at a time uh, and then get them prepped and then you can go in with the roller afterwards. You barely spread the filling. Uh, it's 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 uh, counterintuitive how much you actually put in. Uh, it's just a matter of smearing the surface to get an even coverage, but not thick. Uh, and then you're going to roll it, and then put seam side down, and then pinch the edges just like I did there. Now we're at the rinse and repeat stage. You just uh, get a rhythm going and whatever works best for you just try to keep uh, you don't have to have much of the filling just a, a schmear because uh, it's going to expand too much and it's going to burst Okay, these are going to puff up, so make sure you put enough distance between them so if they double in size, they're not going to be touching and sticking together. And for the nut log, you're just rolling out a bigger version of the same. Try to keep it into a rectangle, and you're going to roll it a little bit thicker than you would the, the nut horns themselves. Uh, just because it's going to be harder to harder roll if it's uh, too thin.
Now you're going to let these proof and puff up a little bit. Uh, you should be preheating your oven, 325, 350, and uh, getting ready. And also get an egg wash uh, prepped. Uh, these are not the prettiest. I've made it a lot nicer. These look pretty good. That's how the bottom should look. Not over dark. And yeah, the top cracked, but. These are actually splitting on top, which is rare. Usually they'll split on the side if they split at all, like like that one there, is splitting on the, the back end, because this has gripped the, the tray, so it, it has to expand that direction so it pump, pops there. <laughs> So tempted to take a bite of one of these. But I'm gonna resist. So good. And there's the cookie. So if you made it this far, uh, please give me a like, uh, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment down below and let me know if you make this recipe and what you think. So I need four egg yolks. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> 